Some women have protested over the deplorable state of roads in Aba, calling on Abi State Governor Dr. Okezie Bazu to repair them. Is this a sincere show of concern, or does the opposition have a hand in it? Also, the Borno State Governor has begun the recruitment of traditional hunters to join the fight against Boko Haram insurgency. Have we gotten to this point? This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. About 200 women in Abia State have protested over the deplorable state of roads in Aba, calling on the state governor, Dr. Okezie Bazu, to repair and construct the roads. The women took to the streets of Aba to lament over lack of good roads in Aba, non-payment of salaries, poor power supply, and unemployment, among other issues. However, further investigation done by PLOS TV Africa indicates strong allegation of opposition sponsoring the protest. Is this real or fiction? Joining me to discuss this are two legal practitioners, Liberos Oshoma. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure. And of course, we have Christian Wogu. Thank you very much for joining us as well. My pleasure. Okay. Before we kick off this conversation, I spoke to a journalist on the ground. We're going to listen to uh, that conversation, and then I'll come back to you. We'll take a subsequent uh, conversation uh, that we had. We'll be taking a listen to a conversation with a journalist who resides in Aba. A group of women uh, yesterday uh, went around the city in protest uh, against uh, bad road and what they called bad governance. Uh, moving from one major street and junction to another, they basically were uh, calling on the government to uh, fix the roads um, and the, the city and um, uh, to ensure that um, they are getting uh, the right governance of the, the sick. Well, they didn't really uh, specify basically the areas that they were more concerned with. But in the city here, um, the major city of Aba, it's, it doesn't have issues in terms of bad roads. Uh, where we have a such situation is at Umba Road, basically, or so so, uh, and few other roads where it's been bad for over 15, 20 years. Some have been like that for over three decades. The Umwa Road area is just very close to the popular Ahiyoho Road, the new market, and that's where a lot of people are more concerned with because um, it connects uh, Potako to which links the express and so on. There were two demonstrations yesterday in the city. After these first women concluded, yeah, there was another group of women who also uh, uh, demonstrated, but this time uh, in solidarity with the governor, that uh, he's doing his best, he's doing all he can to make sure things are working. They should not judge him with the rain, uh, rainy season. Uh, he has already said that when dry season sets in, he's going to do more and all that. So uh, that was uh, basically what the protest was all about yesterday. I've been able to uh, look through the video and uh, uh, where they were said they were receiving um, cash. Uh, from the person who led the protest, and uh, also the the uniform they wore and all that. Uh, we, we had it a uh, women for women for change initiative. Uh, actually, uh, that was the uh, organisation. We were told, uh, you know, we were in charge of the whole thing. But then uh, the issue is another area to look at. Like personally, uh, for a sponsored protest, I would say, uh, I know people will say all protests, yes, are sponsored. But then uh, it depends on the angle uh, it's been sponsored. If it is a sponsored protest, I can't vividly say, but there are visuals proven that they were sharing money publicly at a particular junction in Noble Hill where they stopped, they were sharing money, some of them are removing their, their uniforms and all that. So all that put together uh, makes the whole thing look as if... Uh I'm sure you've seen the story about the women. Uh, what is your response first? Let's, are there legitimate reasons for a protest? Let me start with you, Boris. Yeah, um, you, you see, for us here, we, it is always very common for us to say, oh, people are docile. And then when the people come out to exercise their rights to call on the government to action, it's either, rather than um, find a way of addressing those concerns, government would want to play the hostage by either looking for ways to discredit the protest. And so now we're talking about sharing money. Nobody's talking about 
whether the concerns raised by the women are true or not. That, for me, should be the focal point. Uh, there, that this road really terrible. And it's the, it's, um, what do you call it, uh, darkness hovering over Abba. It's Abba has Abba lost his glory. It, for me, it should be a wake-up call to action. And whether somebody gives somebody money should be secondary. So if I would rather want to hear that, oh, all of these issues that they are protesting about didn't happen, or the roads are fantastic, and that um, the civil servants, you know, they've never had it so good, and that, um, you know, the state of infrastructure and light in Abai is so fantastic that so anybody ordinarily who is protesting... Well, fa fantastic would be overreaching. We know that that any part in Nigeria, no, you see, wouldn't look, find you, Abia, fantastic, Abia State, but Abia are State, they legitimate I've been, in Abia, I've been in Abia since May. Abia State has, is the unluckiest government state in Nigeria. Since 1999, they've not had what I can call a governor. Let's not deceive ourselves. Let's look. Let me tell you, I I have been in Abia, Aba, Aruchuku, uh, Bende, Ututu, uh, Yechiowa, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, or Hafia, um, to where the university is, um, Uturu. All of this, the state of the roads in this area is deplorable. I I I, I used to visit Aba. When we were in Benin, Benin worried those days. Aba was where we used to go make suits. As a university undergraduate, we used to go to Aba. We relish going to Aba. I lived in Orata Road in Aba. But visiting Aba between May and this September this year, I shed tears. Let's bring Kristen into the conversation. You are from that state. What is your perception? Are these women justified? in protesting the situation in Abia State. Yeah, thank you very much. I would say that they are, um, essentially they're exercising their right to freedom of expression. And if government had given that lacuna, that loophole, by Fantastic. not governing appropriately. Exactly. And assuming the opposition even took advantage of it, that's, that's democracy. That's exactly. exactly. That's democracy. So I think I want to align with uh, the Boris who says, the, play, the government, there is no, if there is governance, there will immediately be a proper reporter. Now, the reporter we have is that it is politically motivated. That's okay, I'm reporter. talking about, Qu let's, quickly, let's, let's quickly, bring it. Quickly, Felicity. Okay. I, was, I went into a supermarket in Aba, Abia Hotels in Aba, close to Aba, not local government. As soon as a lady saw me, he said, I recognize this face. He said, Oga, please, you must talk about Aba. This was in July. He said, you must talk about Abba. You've been here now. You see what we are going through. I, I, I felt her pain. I'm talking about a lady, not just a non-nary person, somebody who I presume should be high up there. And, and you know, so when people take it upon themselves to call on the governor to wake up, the governor, funny enough, lives in Abba and goes to Omaha every day. And okay, the road let's, he drives let's, through let's is deplorable. Take, uh, uh, we're able to reach a special advisor to the uh, governor of that state um, on media, and he had this to say. Let's listen to that. And then there is also another response from someone, a former um, governorship uh, candidate in that state. Um, his name was mentioned. Let's just uh, listen to it. First of all, um, I'd like to say that in Abia, we, we have uh, what I may call... Um, toxic uh, opposition elements who are very, very malicious, who don't see politics as just a game, who see it as a do or die. Of, uh, therefore, they are desperate. They can go as far as you can imagine to do anything to, to express their frustration and anger. Uh, there hasn't been any record of any kind of form of protest in Abia until uh, uh, this, the, the tribunal gave its verdict. Uh, in favor of the governor against uh, his uh, opponent, who actually came a distant thought in the governorship election. Here I'm talking about the governorship candidate of the All Progressive Grand Alliance, uh, that's uh, Mr. Alex Oti. Since after the tribunal ruling against him, he he, he returned or shortly. He, of course, he has since returned to his base in Lagos since after the election. But since after the tribunal ruling, from his base in Lagos, he has continuously uh, funded all kinds of uh, propaganda trying to distract the government. So sponsored by Mr. Alex Oti and, uh, and his faction of all progressive Grand Alliance because we have been able to establish that. 
you must take this that the government of Dr. Kezi Bazi in Abia has never said that we have done everything. We have not. We have not finished. We have not done everything. Abia, like every other state, even like Nigeria, is a work in progress. Government, this government will, uh, Governor Bazi will finish his eight years and go. Other governments will still come and still be, co continue with the problem of fixing roads. We have not finished fixing the roads in Abia. But we have finished quite. We have fixed quite a, no, a number of roads, and still uh, work is still ongoing on several. Okay, um, I'll just get my guests to react to this, and then we will take. Um, Alex Oti was actually mentioned, and he had a response to this. But what do you make of the government is acknowledging that, as much as yes, they haven't done everything. They, they have not done working. anything. He didn't say anything. In that response, there was nothing. He didn't say nothing. He only. We're talking about roads, the state of bad roads in Aba. I expected him to say Ubo Hill, Orata Road, Ubo Hill Road, uh, Aba North, the Aba Potakot Road. I expected him to begin to mention names and not to... He dwelt on the election petition matter, the election that had passed. And like my colleague here had said, if because of your ineptitude and bad governance, the opposition decide to latch in on that. Do you blame them? He just talked about election petition and opposition. Yeah, and that, that. That, that conversation was about so seven minutes long. There was, there was nothing, no response. I expected him to point to areas he felt they have done well that nobody is talking about. Like one of, after that video I did on Aba, somebody called me and was accusing me, oh, maybe somebody paid me. I said, no, just disprove my allegations facts for fact. He said there are areas that the governor had worked on I didn't mention. I said, please, mention those areas. Do you know of any areas that the government has worked on that maybe this woman don't know about? Because uh, some of their con uh, concern was that the governor had promised them that the situation in Aba will be addressed before now, but he doesn't seem to have done much in that regard. So, aside Aba, are there areas that you can mention that this administration, which has been in power for four years, this is the second uh, tenure now, has done? You see, I really can't um, say. Now, look, we are talking. Let's take the response here. He is saying there has been no restiveness or agitations. Yes, maybe a public like this, but the people are discontented, particularly with regards to. I know Aba is a commercial hub now. Aba is a place that can generate tremendous foreign exchange yeah. for yeah. this country, and there is just everywhere that is discontentment. That's the point. It's, sorry, I'm not trying to cut you short. If I were the governor, I would sack that special advisor immediately. You know why? These are the kind of people that are misleading and deceiving the governor. These are the people that will come in public and tell the governor you are the best thing to happen. But in their private area, they laugh at the governor. The governor is an absentee governor. He's hardly around. And that is why he will not know the problem. Do you know why the people have well, how do voted you, how for do you, him? How are you sure that the governor I've been is in a bath from, I said since May. I've been on ground. I, I was absentee from Lagos. And, and so I shed tears driving on the roads of Aba. And the worst of all, the governor is an Ungwa man. And so a lot of people felt that, oh, for the first time, having an Ungwa man as governor, he's going to address the problem of, you know, this area because he's from Aba. But unfortunately, the road that leads the old Umwaya Aba road passes through the governor's house. That road had been under construction for as long as you can remember. And that's the road they are showing you on your screen now. The flyover that they started constructing since... Uh, uh, 2015 till date is even abandoned now. If you're coming from uh, 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 Omaha on the express, the governor plies this road every day from his house because he lives in Aba and drives to Omaha every day. In one of those days, I drove behind him. I was on a car and the governor's convoy, and I asked myself, How can a governor drive on this same road? And he didn't deem it fit to fix it. Now, let me ask you about the 90 days ultimatum uh, given to uh, the government uh, they, that they should uh, have a response by this woman. Do you see more of a response other than uh, what the special advisor has uh, put forward? 
I, well, maybe we should just wait for 90 days and see what the response is. We don't... Um, but do you expect um, to see? I don't because see, well, the real response is within 90 days to start some meaningful activity. Exactly. Yeah, but, but I, I did speak with a special advisor who explained that because he has already given a go-ahead to contractors to go back to site, that the reason that some of the work stopped was because of the raining season. I will, I will tell you something, Felicity. Yes. This thing I have that you give me excuse or you give me results. If you give me excuse, you won't give me results. If you give me results, you won't give me excuse. I mean, rain is a nominal. It, it's, it's with us. So um, taking rain as a way out is unacceptable. Well, let, let's address this particular aspect. I, I know there are other uh, issues. Um, I don't know how much time we have left, but the accusation that opposition is sponsoring uh, protest. Let's just listen to that first. Um, the response by Alex Ot, um, a governorship candidate in the last election, um, he has responded to accusation that he sponsored um, the protest. Let's watch, uh, watch that. To say is that uh, whoever said that, and I know it is the style of the Adia state government, is not only lazy, it's lousy because he could simply check and ask the people questions. And in any case, you don't even need to check anything. Um, I believe that your reporters have gone to Aba because I saw some clips of uh, uh, pictures and um, videos that uh, were done by your reporters and circulated in the social media. And there uh, are a whole lot of other reports. All you need to do is to go to Abba. The question they should be asking themselves is, um, which of the allegations that were made by the women is not true? Uh, because I also saw, saw it on the, on the media. Those roads, those markets that we are taking pictures of, don't they exist? So it is very lousy for anybody to be looking for who sponsored women, when women are going through difficulties. They think their style is my style, it's never my style. If I want to say anything like I did say it two days ago, I put my name to it, I address the media, and I take responsibility. I'm not like that. So I think it's very, very uncharitable of whoever said that. And I think it's a lazy person who can't do a simple check. And my advice for them is that they should sit up and walk. I've said that they stole so much money from other people. Because in the last four years and a half, I've demonstrated that they received over 355 billion naira from federal allocation and internally generated revenue. So what did they do with the money? They need to give account of where the money is. There is nothing that you can see that this government has done. I've been struggling to find one good thing that they have done. They need to come out clean. They need to apologize to other people instead of looking for enemies. So to my question, if the government is saying opposition sponsored this protest, and then the journalist that we listened to earlier said another group came um, mm. protesting in solidarity so with the government. Who, so that one? who who would be sponsoring that, that one. Those. No, nobody sponsored that one, um, you know, because the governor is that done so much. Aba is now London, and so the people felt that there's need to support the governor. Okay. You, you I, see, look, Felicity, let's tell ourselves the truth. The reason why Nigeria is what it is today is because of psychophancy. It's because we want, we rather bury our head, you know, like the ostrich, and pretend that all is well when all is indeed not well. The house is burning. As I talk to you now, for me, this is a wake-up call. Let the governor eat the humble pie and say, tell the women, I am sorry I have disappointed you people, but I would. From now, I think maybe I was sleeping, like Leah Moke once said, I was sleeping now, I'm, I'm awake. From so now, I want to do something. Give me between now and a year or two, and you will see action. This idea of raining season, uh, we have to stop because of the raining season, and then the a special advisor blaming the opposition. For me, it's neither here nor there. The question is, Felicity, take a camera, go to, thank God you even have some clips, go to Aba today as I speak. 
it is so bad that you begin to you you tell yourself that ah, this thing is not even reported you know the, the as way accurately as, as, as accurately it, as, it is. as it is it is so bad i'm telling you okay let's let's look that forward you, let's look wait forward. sorry quickly that you begin to think this is a, a town that was projected to be the japan of africa this is a town that you know ought to be the hub the industrial hub of nigeria or the lagos of well Southeast. it can be that way again but the question i want to ask you is do you see a time when because it seems like we're still at the stage in our politics when we still talk about roads like it's this huge exactly. ac ac um, accomplishment of um, any government so do you see a time when road construction and basic infrastructure will no longer be a campaign gimmick because most times we see these things when elections draw close. Yeah, essentially, the point is delivering on governance. If a government rises up, and some of these things wouldn't take more than six months to do. Yeah. If we have right commands, people who are, sure, who are earning money in the name of governance, and they are not actually doing anything. It's a matter of, you, you can even mobilize private sector to join government to get these things done. So it's such a time can come. It's possible. It's just a matter of having the right. Now, we're not talking about politics here. We are talking about minimal expectation. And I must say, not just for Abia State. Yeah, yeah that's true. Just like the women in Abia State are starting something. Yeah. They might find it snowballing across other states that's of true. the nation. Because really, governance is it's at its lowest head in Nigeria now. Missing. So why the silence? You, you, because you, if these you, women are coming up, we all know that this is not peculiar to our state. Is it possible to have more people come out to speak? Maybe more yeah. attention will be focused Felicity. on the roads. Now the women of Abba, just like they spoke in 1929, they've been known to blaze the tree. Now they are blazing the tree. And I would urge other women all over the country to also wake up and maybe lead the men. Since the men are not willing to lead in this, because governance in Nigeria now is at its lowest ebb. The roads are deplorable. It took somebody more than 12 hours to travel from Lagos to Enugu. You travel between Aba, um, Asaba Airport and Enugu, now that they've closed on Enugu Airport, it is, it is hell. Okay, I'm travel from Oweri. Oweri to Omaha, you I land at Oweri Airport. So let's, let, let's, let, we all need to wake up and call governance at all level to action. Your final thoughts in 30 seconds on this segment. Essentially, government should just wake up. Don't trade blames. Don't shift it to opposition. Stand up and begin to work. Let's see. We will defend government when we see results. Exactly. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for sharing your Welcome. thoughts on this Always segment. Welcome. All right, and thank you as well for staying uh, this long and um, don't go away yet. We're still here for you. I will take a short break, and when we return, we'll be speaking on the new tactics employed by the Bonu State Government in the fight against insurgency, voodoo hunters. Stay with us. <laughs>